The purpose of this video is to demonstrate Avanza's Avispec spectrometers, light sources, and fiber optic accessories for a chemometry or absorbance uh, experiment. So the materials that we'll need is a, a laptop computer, a desktop computer running Avasoft software, an Avispec spectrometer we see here at the bottom, which has a fiber optic cable connected into a cuvette cell holder, which is uh, has a one centimeter uh, cuvette cell in it, and then a light source. This happens to be an Avalite DHC deuterium halogen light source. And then some methyl blue solution, which we have uh, diluted into various concentrations, and, and as well as an unknown concentration. So now we're ready to move into uh, Avasoft to begin our experiment. The first thing we need to do is click, uh, turn, click on Start to start the software. Then we want to go to File, Start New Experiment. I'm going to go ahead and reuse the name Absorbance Chemometry for this. Um, if I hit save, it's going to ask me if I want to reload this since that name already existed. Yes. So now going forward, any file that I save, any spectrum I save, will begin with Absorbance Chemometry, that file name, and have a number appended thereafter. So now we're ready to set up the instrument for to make it optimal for this measurement. So uh, in, to do this, we use scope mode, which is basically a setup mode where we set integration time and averaging. So we will be um, we can do that one of two ways. We can either set our integration time uh, manually, so we could increase this to 20, and that to 5 or something. Um, our goal being to try to increase the maximum counts at these this peak, which is uh, there at about. Um, 656 nanometers to roughly 80 percent of the maximum which is 65,000 counts. So I can do this manually but that takes a lot of time so it's much easier to use this auto integration configure button. If I click on that the software actually uses an algorithm process to find uh, the optimal integration time so as to get to about 80 percent of maximum counts and then it also sets averaging so as to optimize signal to noise and the square root of the number of averages is the improvement in signal to noise that you can get so it's always important to use uh, averaging so uh, I've done these measurements by the way with a cuvette with water uh, which is our solvent in the cell path so that's very important that you do this measurement uh, with with your solvent in the, in the path now we can go ahead and take a reference of that solvent. So we're going to save the reference by clicking on this white square. And click OK. Then we need to turn off the light source to take a dark spectrum. So we're going to allow the, the spectral counts to go down to zero and we're going to click on the black square. Okay, now this is very important. Um, because of this uh, cell holder is open air, we can have the influences of uh, ambient light in this measurement. So we want to make sure we subtract out that dark signal. We saved it. Now we need to go to Setup, Subtract, Save, Dark. So that subtracts out that dark signal. Now we can turn the light source back on and we're ready to move into absorbance mode. So we're going to go ahead and click on this A here in the software. This is where most chemometric type measurements are taken. Uh, any, uh, most chemistry measurements are done in absorbance. So um, this particular technique is, a, is based on Beer-Lambert law. Um, and so we're going to create a calibration curve. But in order to do that, to begin with, we want to know approximately what the center wavelength that we're working with is. We can do that one of two ways. We can either try to zoom in, and we do that by simply using our left mouse click and then creating a, a box from the upper left to the lower right and zooming in so we can see uh, more granularity in our x-axis and determine that about 665 is the maximum for this peak. If I want to zoom out, I simply make the opposite square from the lower right to the upper left and zoom out. That's one way of doing it. The other is to use this peak finder function. That happened to be turned on right now. So to turn it on, you simply click on that, and that makes this green line appear. Then I can there again go in and see, okay, around 665 is the center line, and that's displayed in this window box here. So using that information, uh, we're going to create our calibration line. So I'm going to remove that sample out. I'm going to put our solvent back into the cell holder. And then we're going to go into Application, Chemometry, Settings. I'm going to first clear out the data from the previous, and we're going to set the peak at 665 nanometers. I'm going to set the width uh, of that peak. It's much larger than 20 nanometers, but I think 20 nanometers should be sufficient for this demonstration. I uh, could set it at 40 or, or, or larger, uh, whatever the peak width is approximately. 
Then for the concentration unit, we're going to use percent. We could also use moles. Then we can select between either first order or second order quadratic. I have several samples, and so I think we'll get a better fit on the line if we use a second order quadratic fit for this calibration. And again, this is a Beer-Lambert law type uh, experiment. So we're going to be measuring concentration, uh, known concentrations, and associating that with absorbance units. So we'll start with zero, and that's the solvent. The solvent's already in the cell path, so I'm going to go ahead and read that absorbance point. Now I'm going to move to 10%, and I need to uh, change out the cuvette here. And I'm going to read that second point. Now we're going to go to 20. And we'll read, well, I need to type in 20, and read that point. Now 50. And we'll read that point. And now 100. And obviously, for those of you who've worked with methyl blue, this is not uh, a pure methyl blue. This is just a dilution of methyl blue and then dilutions thereafter. It would be too opaque for this spectrometer if it was 100% methyl blue. So now uh, I've got a, a line here, and now I'm going to calculate a calibration line over that. So I'm going to go ahead and click Calculate New Line. So we have a pretty good fit here, uh, 2.62 standard deviation, so not too bad. We'll go ahead and save that calibration line. We're going to call that methyl blue 12. We've done this experiment, I guess, 12 times. And we have our line. It's a pretty good fit. So now we can exit out of here, and we can actually practically use this uh, to, to test an unknown. So we'll start with uh, uh, application, chemometry, enable. So you can see 100%. Um, that was the uh, most recent measurement. I left that uh, cuvette in there, and we're still at 100%. So now I can test an unknown sample and find out that it's roughly 55%. Uh, so this concludes our demonstration of Vanta's uh, chemometric analysis. Thank you for your attention.